Good morning, YouTube. We finally made it to Sky Pond. It is 5.30 in the morning. The hike took us a little bit over two hours, and then it took another 30 minutes to scramble around the lake and find a composition. The plan this morning is I'm gonna do a 16 by nine with the spires on the left, and hopefully a reflection on the left side as well. And then the right side is gonna be balanced out by that beautiful cloud that you see already starting to catch light, and hopefully some of that light reflecting in the water. You can hear we got a little bit of gust of wind, so the reflections are gonna be iffy, but I'm very confident we're gonna get the color, and I'm very confident we're gonna get some really nice light on the peaks. The reflection is secondary. If we don't get it, we don't get it. I'm not worried about it. We have all the elements here to have a nice, balanced, beautiful image. But the lights already starting to look beautiful, so let's go ahead and start shooting. One of my favorite times to shoot lakes at Rocky Mountain National Park is about 30 minutes before sunrise in that nice blue hour light. As you can see here, you get this beautiful deep blue in the sky and reflecting off of the water. Now what you can't see and what your eyes can't see when you're standing there is that the peaks are already starting to catch that little bit of soft alpine glow. Your camera can see it during a long enough exposure, giving you this really nice soft orange pink on the peaks, contrasted against the deep blue of the sky. Now the reason you're not seeing an example of that here is I completely blew it. I tried to stitch a pano as I always do, and I didn't overlap my edges enough because it was dark and I couldn't tell where I was looking, and none of the images were usable. Clouds aren't cooperating. We have this thin layer of cloud all the way across the sky. It's catching over in the east. It's not catching yet here, but I'm optimistic because we still have about 20 minutes. So if that light catches directly above the spires, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. We don't need the reflection. I don't care about the clouds in the east. It'll just be a four by five composition of the spires with some beautiful light up above. So I see the cloud. The cloud just doesn't see the light. So I don't know. I'll show you over in this direction, but there's beautiful pink cloud all along the peaks over here nothing over here yet so like I said still got about 25 minutes until actual sunrise so we got time but so frustrating as I went to spin the camera around to show you the light over on the east the light started to catch above the spires now this is a 30 second clip but it's actually a five minute clip that I've sped up to 10 times just to show you how fast this light changes we go from getting beautiful soft pink and orange light above the peaks and as soon as that light starts hitting the peaks you'll see that the cloud immediately loses all color and almost vanishes. Just like that you have an entirely different scene on your hands. Alright well we had a brief moment there where we had some beautiful color on the peaks and some really nice pink cloud just above the peaks. So I think the image is gonna look really nice. We didn't have the reflections, but we really don't need them. Um, I just cropped up so there's not a whole lot of water in the scene, just enough that shows that the lake is at the base. Um, and really the start of the show is the peaks and the color. So I'm more than happy with this composition and with this image. Uh, this is only the second or third time I've shot this lake. And this is by far the best uh, conditions that I've had. There was a lot better. Okay, I have no idea how my camera got this crooked, but we're just going to have to live with it because it's the footage we've got. This is the light I ended up going with. The images that I got with the soft pink in the sky just didn't work for me. They lacked balance. And as you'll see here when I go to show you the uh, final image, the light on the peaks were such a strong draw, and having the beautiful light off to the east actually gave the image a perfect balance. Even though there was no light above the peaks, I still felt that the final image worked because there was strong enough interest on the left and the right to make the final 16 by 9 image come together. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments though about how you feel about the final image.
I just wanted to quickly show this clip here because I think this perfectly illustrates what a lot of people experience. This beautiful orange color that we have on the peaks before and right after sunrise is not a guarantee. As you can see here, a cloud's about to pass, and as that cloud passes, the color completely disappears, and when the light returns, it's a bright white, and the quality of light is entirely different. I think a lot of folks see these Alpen Glow images and think they're not real because they've never experienced it. And the truth is, it's not a guarantee. It doesn't happen all the time. Uh, you really have to have the right conditions to get that beautiful color on the peaks. Okay, so as you can see, the peaks are catching some beautiful light. And I'm thinking it's going to look really nice in infrared, black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Canon 5D Mark II. And I'm going to put on the 24 to 70. And we're just going to shoot a series of just the peaks with the nice wispy clouds above. And get that really nice high contrast black and white image. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the previous crooked ass scene and I have converted to black and white. Now, I'm not a video editor, so I know this looks like garbage, but you get the general idea here. What you can see is, yes, you get that nice light on the peaks and you do get some contrast in the sky, but everything below the peaks just goes dark. And then everything in the sky just gets a bright white. There's very little contrast in the scene overall, and it just isn't that aesthetically pleasing. Now what I'm going to do is convert over to the infrared camera and show you how the scene changes with that camera. And as we transfer over to the infrared camera, you'll see the immediate difference. And again, a lot of this has to do with just the quality of my <laughs> video editing skills. But what you'll see is that in the previous clip, you had almost everything below that light on the peaks was a middle gray. Whereas here you can see a ton of contrast. Those pine trees are almost a bright white and then you have the dark black and a lot of the rocks. And this is really, to me, the biggest advantage is that you get a ton more contrast and interest in infrared than you would with traditional black and white. But you let me know in the comments, what do you think of this image? And additionally, I wanna point out that this is just a 24 megapixel sensor and you can see just how sharp and beautiful those details are. And yes, there is one dust spot in the sky that I'm realizing as I record this audio, but let's just pretend that that's not there. If you've ever watched any of my past videos, you know I like to pick on my wife, but I truly hope everybody out there is able to find somebody who's willing to get up at two o'clock in the morning, hike five miles just to nap on some rocks while you take landscape images. I'm a very, very lucky man. All right, well, we made it back to camp. There's probably people who would frown upon opening a beer at 9.30 in the morning, but I say if you get up, 2.30 in the morning, put in 10 miles, cheers, got to stay hydrated. But in all seriousness, I wanted to quickly talk about Sky Pond, uh, both from a photography perspective and a hiking perspective. So for photography, uh, that is deceivingly small, that lake, and the peaks behind it are extremely tall, and you're right on top of the lake, um, and you have to be extremely wide to be able to get that all in one shot. So I, the widest lens I brought today was 24, and I, I wouldn't have even been close. So there were no reflections, so it wasn't a problem for me, but if there were, I would have had to do a multi-row pano to get everything in. You'd probably need to be more like 14, 15 millimeters to get everything in a single shot. Additionally, there's a lot of different ways you can shoot the lake. A lot of the common images you see are from the east with the sun at your back shooting the peaks, and that can be beautiful. But almost always, you're gonna have color off to the east. So what I opted to do was walk all the way around the lake until you can't go any further. And this way I was able to get the color in the east and the peaks. Uh, and that's probably the way that I would recommend shooting, unless there's some wildflowers or something in the foreground that you're able to make an interesting foreground. You don't need the sky as much. Photography aside, that hike is a butt kicker. <laughs> So it's about uh, nine and a half miles round trip. The first three miles up to Lockvale are pretty easy, uh, not terrible at all. But that last mile and a half is really tough. It's a lot of stairs. It's almost like a half mile of stairs. Uh, it's pretty much uphill the whole way, steep incline. And then you get to the waterfall. Now, the waterfall looks a lot more intimidating than it really is, but it could be dangerous. If you're not paying attention, if you don't maintain three points of contact on the falls, 
it can be a little tricky, uh, especially if you're trying to do it for sunrise and you need to do it in the dark. It's hard to find handholds and footholds, so I would recommend budgeting a lot of time to get up the falls so that you can do it safely. On the way back, we were coming down during the daytime, and it was a lot easier, but there were also a lot more people, and I can't tell you how many people we saw who got to the falls, got intimidated and scared, and turned around. Uh, a lot of people that happens to and I would just say that if you're going to do this make sure you do a lot of research you look at it and you make sure you feel comfortable because last thing you want to do is hike all the way up those damn stairs and then make it to the falls and feel like you can't do it in terms of time it took us just over two hours to do the whole hike and then another 20 to 30 minutes scrambling around the lake looking for a composition so about two and a half hours total we set out at uh, three o'clock in the morning we got to the trailhead and I was set up with my composition just after 5:30. Uh, I would say everybody hikes different speeds. Think about how long it's gonna take you and add 10 minutes per mile at least. And then I would set aside at least 20 minutes just for the falls. And it's not gonna take you 20 minutes to get up the falls, but it might take you 10 minutes to get the courage to try the falls. So budget way more time than you think you'll need, uh, especially if you're doing sunrise, because last thing you wanna do is get all the way up there and miss the light. So just a few tips that I wanted to give you uh, if you're planning on doing this yourself, but otherwise, Hope you have a great weekend. Get out there and make some images. Cheers.